Hey everyone, welcome to this episode of Inside the Sandbox. Today we're going to show you how to operate a skid steer. So yes, you've seen a lot of our other how-to uh, videos. We love the feedback we get. Thank you guys for giving us the comments. This episode, we don't have skid steers off, out at our site very often, so we do have this out here for a special event, so we thought we'd do a how-to. We, we did run skid steers for many, many years before, um, but now we don't. So we brought this in, in for a special event, we thought we'd do a great how-to video for you. Couple of things, first, we've already done the, the pre-inspection on the equipment, I think that's really key, is to check out your equipment. The pre-op inspection is key. We also are in a controlled environment here, so we're gonna be doing some scoops, showing you some things, but uh, we're in a very controlled environment. <laughs> Today we're running a Bobcat T550 skid steer track machine. So they rough, they're about 7,000 pounds. I will tell you this uh, from experience, skid steers are actually probably one of the most dangerous pieces of machinery, which is a little bit scary because it's kind of easy. As you can see, we rented this one. A lot of people can rent them. It's deceiving because people think because they're smaller, they're safer. I would actually argue the opposite. The larger the machine, it is a lot tougher to get, you know, flip one of those things over or do whatever. They're just a bigger base on them. So when we have like our big excavators and dozers out on our site here, those are a lot more stable. These little skid steers are really easy if you don't know what you're doing to get in a lot of trouble. That's why I want to do a quick how-to video. Uh, I'm not going to go into a lot of details about this machine other than the question I get the most is the difference between, you'll see this machine is a tracked machine versus a wheeled machine. So if you see the two different systems that we have um, on skid steers, and really it comes down to two different pieces. Typically these track systems are good for a softer environment like our sand or a landscaper on, on grass is gonna use these because they kind of float above the surface. A wheeled machine, you're putting 7,000 pounds in four points and they're gonna dig into the ground. So they're better for harder surfaces like asphalt, parking lot, whatnot. Now, so most people would ask, well, then why wouldn't you just get the skid with the track machine? The difference comes down to cost. This undercarriage alone, they're much more expensive. There's a lot more moving parts. These tracks, the treads to replace, those are a lot more expensive versus a single tire is very easy to replace on a wheeled machine. So if you don't need it, you're working on hard surfaces or anything like that, that's typically what you want to use a wheeled machine, not a tracked machine. So that's just high level on that. Again, we're going to go over this tracked machine. The controls are all the same. So let's go ahead and get in the machine. Okay, so I'm gonna open these. Now, skid steers are, again, from a safety perspective, they're actually kind of challenging to get in and out. There are some newer machines that now have side entry with a single arm, which are pretty cool, and the reason is, there's a lot to step on here and ways to get your foot wedged in something, so just be really careful. Always three points of contact when you're getting in and out of these machines. First thing, seat belt. Again, you kind of see they're smaller calves. You kind of wear a skid steer. And then these, most skid steers, again, have this big arm over the top of you. Down right there. Now, Bobcat, there's a key there. And I just wait. There's usually an indicator up on the left when you're good to start. We are good there. We're running. Now, a uh, skid steer like this, again, cat, John Deere, bobcat, a lot of them, there's different control types. Uh, this one is probably the simplest structure, and this is where the, all your driving is on your left, all of your boom and bucket control is on your right hand. Um, those are the simplest. There's several different configurations that you can run, uh, but that's the easiest, and it also is very similar to a wheel loader, to an excavator, things like that. So. Now, again, I got seatbelt on, this big thing, none of this, the machine won't move at all with this big safety arm when it's up above your head. So that's a key there, is this will normally be above you, you have to pull it down in order for anything to work. Um, outside of that, with Bobcat here, there's also a parking brake switch up here on my left, right there. And then there's a way to turn on the hydraulics because I see a little lockout symbol. So this one, just there's a button up here and I see I'm green, I'm good to go. Everything's live right now. So now with this one, there's a couple different ways to control your throttle. And again, this is very common with almost any skid steer. There is a, on this one, there's a throttle knob over on your right. They can go up like that. 
generally most operators actually use the one foot pedal that's in. It's a manual throttle. So you'll see I just set my right foot on there. So usually most operators want to use their foot pedal just because it saves fuel so you're not running at a higher RPM all the time. So usually I'm going to use my right foot here when I need to go faster or not. Again, it's, it's more increasing the power to the engine, which doesn't necessarily translate to speed, although it will usually make things go faster, but that's all going to be controlled through my, my joysticks. But it does give you more power. So when you're trying to lift material, whatever you have loaded there, you're going to want to use your foot pedal to give you some more power. Now everything's live right now. Again, if I start with my right hand, uh, right hand's boom and bucket. So if I pull back, raises my boom up. Right hand forward, brings the boom down. Then if I go right hand, I'm gonna bring it back up. Right hand to the right, opens the bucket. Right hand to the left, closes the bucket. Perfect and then bring it back down. Now I call this driving position, which is really important. Uh, obviously, you know, you don't want to be necessarily all the way down to the ground. Usually the bottom will actually drag a little bit. So you want to be a little bit above the ground here, um, but you also don't want to be any higher. You know, I get some people driving up higher and there's a couple of reasons. First of all, you'll notice I can't see. So it's really tough to see where you're going. The other thing is we're going to show you this, the, the way you get in trouble in the skid steer, uh, it's really with the center of gravity. The higher you have that tool in the front, uh, the more likely you are you can tip the machine. So generally you want to be low and tight to the ground. So right about here. Now that's my right hand, okay? There are accessory hydraulics on here for switches. You know, the great thing about a skid steer, like a Swiss Army knife, you know, you can swap it out, put different tools on there. These, you would have buttons on there to control that. Left is driving. Again, this is a simple uh, driving mechanism. You push forward, goes forward, pull back, goes backwards, and then left and right. However hard you go left or right, that's how the machine's gonna turn. So it's very, very simple like that, okay? Other than that, again, you'll see there are control settings up on the Bobcat where you can change the configuration of how those controls, again, we're running ISO controls right now. Uh, I also call them CAT controls, uh, but there's other things like that. You've got all the fuel and all your gauges are usually up in the corner of one of the machines. Sometimes there's a backup camera, sometimes there's a rear view mirror, things like that. And then down low, again, we're in a climate controlled cab. Uh, which uh, this one, uh, all the climate controls down low there. So let's go up here. I'm going to show you real quick. So now I'm just with my left hand going forward a little bit. And again, I give it my foot pedal, give it a little bit of gas. So it'll go faster or slower. Now, when you come up here, the key, uh, you know, right now my bucket is curled up. You know, that's obviously not going to, if I drive straight in, I am not going to really get anything. So this is no different than a wheel loader. You gotta open that bucket up so you kind of flatten it out so it's flat to the ground. Then you drive forward and I give it a little bit of gas. Now, this is similar to a wheel loader where you can be pulling up a little bit while curling that bucket. You're just trying to get a really full bucket, uh, it fully scoop in there. So, now once I have it, I'm gonna back up. The key is don't keep pulling up on this. Now, with this machine, there is no auto level on this one. And what I mean by that, sometimes when you pull back in your right hand, you'll actually have the bucket will uncurl a little bit to keep it level. This one does not. And what that means is the material is gonna come right over the back, right over your cab, which is not great if you're a new operator to do that on a job site. I'll show you that in a sec, but again, low and tight. So I'm down below me. Now I back up. I'll bring it over a little bit. And then to dump it, we're just gonna pull right hand back. Now again, without that auto level, you need to be, I'm going to the right a little bit to open that bucket up as I'm going up. Now you really just need enough room to dump, have enough room to open the bucket. So you're talking maybe four or five feet. And then I'm driving forward here slowly, right there. And then I'm just going right hand to the right and this will dump my bucket. I can also be pulling back at the same time to dump it all the way. There's a full scoop. And then at the end, you curl it all the way back up bringing it down a little bit and then my left I'm just pulling back Again, it can be tougher visibility in a skid steer can be a little bit more difficult just because you got the arms on both sides so this is where again a rear view camera is helpful or the mirror but just make sure you know where you're going with that machine so I'll do another one here same thing biting in a little bit this is where if I see I can get more power 
can see how my hydraulics have more power right there. Now, I'm just gonna keep this one here. Really, the only time you're gonna get in trouble in a skid steer, it's again, when that bucket is up above you. This is the biggest mistake I see. So right now, I am fully loaded. So you see, I raise it up here. The machine, you see some spilling over the back there. This is where you're very unstable. So this is where new operators get in a lot of trouble. It is really not that difficult to flip a skid steer. Uh, and if you haven't done it, if you're a new operator, it will scare you. Uh, it's, again, if you're seatbelt in, it is, there is a way you can right yourself there, but obviously you don't want to get in that situation, period. So this is your most critical time when you're up like this, uh, that you're very top heavy. So you should only be inching forward slowly and then you can dump. And then I'm bringing it back down. Drive around. I'm not gonna go a ton into grading with these. Again, I really just want to go over very basic controls here. Uh, but the skid steer, again, you just basically, you can see your blade and you're generally trying to keep it flat and then you're just driving along the ground there. You just want to, you try to want to avoid letting it dig all the way in. Kind of similar to a bulldozer, you do want to have some material in front of your blade, generally. Now what happens here, if you go too deep, you'll see what happens. I can just dig it straight in and you're gonna create a big pothole right there. So that's why you really gotta be careful. Now, if you are trying to lay material down, uh, gravel, whatnot, uh, sometimes the best way, raise this up so you can actually see underneath it. Again, be cautious when you're top heavy. But this is where I'm getting it right up in front of me. And you can see this is where almost shaking, I do this kind of shaking with the hand, open and close. You can lay a row of material. I'm not doing it great here, I didn't have a full, trying to avoid doing a full clump, but you can see, and while you're trying to watch going backwards. But generally you could drop gravel if you have a nice even bucket there. You can spread it that way. Again, not the best up. And then the final thing is floating the blade. Get rid of this material. Now these machines, you can backdrag a couple different ways. Again, if I get that bucket all the way, I can see the edge of that and I can just pull back on it. You obviously want to be careful. You don't ever pull that bucket all the way in. You don't want to be too close. So it's basically kind of straight at a little bit of an angle just so you can see the corner of that. Just like that, and I can backfill it. Now, floating the blade. Really two different ways. So again, almost similar to the wheel loader, even a dozer, you can usually disengage the hydraulics. Turn the... Uh... You can disengage, so there's a way to disengage the hydraulics here. Um, it's called float. So you set it down flat, and then on the Bobcat, there's a little button here, a yellow button on my right joystick. I hold that in and kind of jam the joystick forward. And now I've disengaged the hydraulics. So then all you do, and sometimes I have a bucket open a little bit, I can back straight up and the blade itself, the boom is floating. There's no power to that. So you see how I get a nice smooth surface there. And then at the end, I just pull it out of float by pulling back just a little bit, keep backing up right there. So that's one way. The other way, if you're dealing with a really rough surface, the other way you can float the blade is with the blade angled down. So same strategy, I'm going to put it down the ground flat. Same thing, hold that right yellow button, go like this, and then I can actually roll the blade up. Again, I'm just trying to be able to see behind it. You do not want to keep rolling that in. You never want to be over a 45 degree angle. But now, I back up, same strategy here. I can actually see behind. I'm getting a little bit of dirt behind the bucket. This is good if it's really rough and you're really trying to fill in some holes. And then at the end here, 
I'm just pulling it out of float again. But again, you don't, I don't just want to pick it up because if I do, I'm going to leave a big pile of dirt. So I'm going to slowly, it's out of float now. I'm going to keep dragging it out and slowly get rid of that material that's there. There you go. Again, two different strategies for how you can float that blade and use the back of it. So, so we're going to go ahead and park it here. A uh, couple of things, and I speak from experience here, where you don't want to look like an idiot. Uh, make sure your bucket's all the way ground. Again, with these front, most skid steers nowadays are you access it from the front door. What I see often, they'll drive up, and I'll uh, see if I go a little bit further here. You'll see I actually am hitting, hitting the hydraulics. So you actually need to make sure you're all the way down. Uh, it's a pretty common mistake that I see rookies make. So you're all the way down, usually you flatten that bucket out, so you're not stepping into something that's pitched like that. Then we're gonna go ahead, lock out the hydraulics, put the parking brake on, and then we're good to go. This goes up first, and turn that off. Really important for three points of contact, getting out. Hopefully you guys enjoy that. Again, by no means are we experts. This is kind of what we've learned out here. We teach customers how to use these things. Uh, we'd love to hear your comments. Let us know any tips and tricks. Uh, there's probably a lot of very proficient operators out there. Let us know how you learned how to use a skid steer. Uh, again, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you on the next episode.